Jesus, the Anointed One. Contrary to the depiction given in the New Testament Gospels of Matthew and Luke, Jesus was likely not born the Messiah. He received this title through his initiation by John the Baptist, and so it is not surprising that both Mark and John are conspicuously absent of the virgin birth mythology and begin their stories of Jesus' short career with his initiation by John. Although their version of Jesus' baptism by John describes it as involving submergent under the water, the term baptism has connotations of initiation, and Gnostic scriptures indicate that the original rite was performed in conjunction with the Canabossum anointing rite, the anointing taking place either before or after the baptismal ceremony. And in fact, scholars suggest that Gnosticism itself originated amongst Jewish baptismal sects, for baptism has never been a Jewish rite. Some Gnostic texts also specifically state that Jesus received the title Christ because of the anointing, not because of the water baptism. Conceivably, the washing off of the oil with water would have been a means to begin the termination of ritual and the oil's effects. The description of the after effects of the rite clearly indicate that Jesus underwent an intense psychological experience, more than one would receive from a simple submergent in water. Quote, Jesus came from Nazareth, Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending upon him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. At once a spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the desert for forty days being tempted by Satan, who was with wild animals, and angels attended him. Mark 1, 9-13. Now, it should be noted that the visions and words described were seen and heard only by Jesus, as it specifically states that he saw. The role played by John the Baptist as priest and prophet is very similar to that of the Old Testament prophet Samuel. Just as Samuel's anointing of Saul and David marked them as Messiah kings, so did Jesus' initiation by John mark him as the Christ. In the event after Jesus' vision and his overwhelmed recluse into the desert, there are clear parallels with the story of the prophet Samuel, Samuel's initiation of Saul with the cannabis-rich holy ointment and Saul's ensuing madness in the form of possession by the Spirit and wandering off to prophesize, or as the Hebrew word nabai used in this context means, to act in an ecstatic and frenzied manner. The state tale of Saul's possession by the Spirit is an example of how the agents interpreted the effects of cannabis and other entheogens. What we perceive as being high or stoned, the agents called possessed by the Spirit of the Lord. Quote, As a result of the spiritual anointing, Jesus expected to be different, and he was different. The prophecies had said that the Messiah would receive from God wisdom and insight, the power to heal and subjugate evil. The faith of Jesus was so strong that he did not question the capacities, that these capacities had now been conferred upon him." End quote, Schoenfield. The entheogenic effects of the cannabis anointing oil would have immensely magnified both Jesus' own expectations and the ensuing experience with John. In some authoritative texts of the Gospel according to Luke, after the vo baptism, the voice of God declares, This day I have begotten thee. This indicates that the events of Jesus' encounter with John marks the true beginnings of Jesus' mission and his acknowledgment, acknowledgments as the Messiah. The importance of the anointing and Jesus' own acknowledgment of this is again exemplified in the Gospel of Luke. According to the New Testament, Jesus began his ministry in Nazareth by reading the following passage from the scroll of Isaiah and proclaiming, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Quote, the spirit of Yahweh God is upon me, because Yahweh has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to, uh, and to the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Isaiah 6, 1, 1, 2. Now that's a really interesting quote in relation to cannabis, because uh, here he says he's going to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He's going to heal the brokenhearted proclaim liberty to the captives, and open the prisons to those who are bound. This from the Anointed One, you know, like, and that's really so much of what 
this has to do with this whole cannabis movement, man. This is about healing the sick, freeing the imprisoned, and healing the brokenhearted. That's really what this whole movement is about. And it's so great that these two messages are now back together after an almost 2,000 year separation. Unlike the shamanistic priests and kings of earlier generations, Jesus did not follow the strict Old Testament taboos that limited the holy cannabis oils used to Yahweh's chosen few, but broke tradition and began to liberally use it in both healing and initiation rites. Through the open distribution, the singular Christ, the anointed, was extended to become the plural term Christians. That is those, quote, who had been smeared or anointed by rubbing on this divine unction, obtained from certain special herbs or plants, they believed they were donning the panoply of God, end quote, John Allegro. As the New Testament's John explains, you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. The anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as this anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as that has taught you, remain in him. How many of you can say you've learned something from this here? Similar to that, man. Something that's opened your eyes up so that you can look out and you can see the truth. Quote, the Christians, the smeared or anointed ones, received knowledge of all things by his anointing from the Holy One. Thereafter, he had no other need of an, another teacher and re remained forever endowed with all knowledge. End quote. Allegro. Whatever the full ingredient of the Christian unction may have been, they would have certainly have included the aromatic gums and spices of the traditional Israelite anointing well, myrrh, aromatic cane, i.e. cannabosum, cinnamon, and cassia. Under certain enclosed conditions, a mixture of these substances rubbed on the skin can produce the kind of intoxicating belief in self-omniscience referred to in the New Testament. Now that was John Allegro again. Allegro has often been criticized for his book, The Sacred Mushroom of the Cross, which I dispute many of the theories in, but at the same time, he did click into this element of drug use amongst early Christianity and was a brilliant scholar. He was amongst the first scholars to actually work on the translations of the Dead Sea Scrolls and, you know, take a look seriously at these Gnostic documents. So we can't totally uh, uh, um, discount everything that he says. The man had a lot of really good material and a lot of really good ideas. He just got lost in this mushroom madness that has so many people tripped up into looking for a, a, a rainforest uh, mushroom as a desert sacrament, you know. And this is a subject that I tackle in depth in my new book, Sex, Drugs, Violence in the Bible. The Incomplete Baptism. In the first few centuries AD, Christian Gnostic groups such as the Arcanites, Valentians, and Sethians rejected water baptism as superfluous, referring to it as the incomplete baptism. In the tractate, The Testimony of Truth, water baptism is rejected with references to the fact that Jesus baptized none of his disciples. Being anointed with an unutterable anointings, the so-called sealings recorded in the Gnostic text can be seen as an, a very little event. To quote the Gospel of Philip, there is water in water, there is fire in the anointing. The anointing oil with oil was the introduction of the candidate into unfading bliss, thus becoming himself a Christ. The oil as a sign of the gift of the Spirit was quite natural within a Semitic framework, and therefore the ceremony is probably very early. In time, the biblical meaning became obscured. The surviving Gnostic descriptions of the effects of the anointing rite make it very clear that the holy oil had intense psychoactive properties, which prepared the recipient into entrance into unfading bliss. In some Gnostic texts, like the Pista Sophia and the Book of Jew, the spiritual ointment is a prerequisite for entry into the highest mysteries. In the Gospel of Philip, it is written that the initiates of the empty rite of baptism, quote, go down to the water and come up without having received anything. The anointing is superior to baptism, for the anointing, for from the anointing we were called anointed ones, Christians, not because of the baptism. 
And Christ also was so named because of the anointing. For the Father anointed the Son, and the Son anointed the Apostles, and the Apostles anointed us. Therefore, he who has been anointed has the all. He has the resurrection, the light, the Holy Spirit. If one receive this unction, this person is no longer a Christian, but a Christ. End quote. Now that's from one of these ancient Gnostic texts that was hidden over 17, 16, 1700 years ago. And uh, clearly from that text, we can see just how clear the distinction between the empty water baptism and the anointing oil was, which uh, provided the initiate with the means for entering into unfading bliss. Similarly, the gospel of truth records that Jesus specifically came into their midst so that he could, quote, anoint them with the ointment. The ointment is the mercy of the Father. Those whom he has anointed are the ones who have become perfect, end quote. In the apocryphal, the Acts of Thomas, it refers to the ointment's entheogenic effects as being specifically derived from a certain plant. Holy oil, given us for sanctification, hidden mystery in which the cross was shown us. You are the unfolder of hidden parts. You are the humiliator of stubborn deeds. You are the one who shows the hidden treasures. You are the plant of kindness. Let your power come by this unction. You are the plant of kindness. Let your power come by this unction. I don't think we're going to get it any clearer than this. When we come back, we're going to take a look at how these Gnostics use this holy anointing oil for initiation into a new way of looking at things that was referred to as the kingdom of heaven. On the road again. Nearly 700,000 Americans were arrested on marijuana charges last year. That's an enormous waste of law enforcement resources and terribly unfair to those arrested and their families. It's time we stopped arresting adults who smoke marijuana responsibly. For more information, visit Normal's website at www.normal.org or call toll-free 888-67-NORMAL and tell them Willie sent you. 